everybody. Today we'll talk about the tissue. We have talked about the chemistry, chemical level. We have talked about the cellular level, the cell and the organelles, right? And one level higher or bigger is the tissue. First, we'll see uh, what is a tissue, how to define a tissue. Then we'll talk about four different types of tissues. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue or muscular tissue, and neural or nervous tissue. Those are four different types of tissues in the body. First, we'll talk about the epithelial tissue, locations and functions, different types of cells in the epithelial tissue and their arrangements. Then we'll talk about the properties of epithelial tissue, and then we'll move to the another type of tissue, which is the most abundant tissue in the body, that is the connective tissue. After we finish the connective tissue, we'll talk about the nervous tissue and then muscle tissue. First, what is a tissue? You already know that tissue is the collection of many similar cells, similar type of cells grouped together to form a tissue. Make sense? In heart muscle tissue or cardiac muscle tissue, you'll see all muscle fibers or cells are same. Make sense? In a skeletal muscle tissue, those muscles are attached to the bone, you'll see all muscle fibers are skeletal type, same, and form the skeletal muscle tissue. So, the cells, could be arranged in different ways. For example, in epithelial tissue, you will always see the cells are attached to each other. For example, these are the cells, columnar cells, and they are attached to each other by intercellular junctions. So, in epithelial tissue, you will see the cells are attached to each other. Make sense? You have seen that. Another thing, in epithelial tissue, you will see that the lower end of the cells are attached to the underlying connective tissue. So this is actually not epithelial tissue. Connective tissue structure, connective tissue supports the epithelial tissue. And this structure is called the basement membrane. Okay. So all these cells are similar cells. Okay. This is epithelial tissue. Connective tissue cells are usually not attached to each other. They are not attached to each other. These are the cells, nuclei. In between, you have matrix. matrix. Okay? Sometimes we see fibers in the matrix. Okay? Fibers. So you see that epithelial tissue has some properties. Connective tissue has some special properties. In case of muscle tissue, you'll see that muscle fibers are attached to each other like this. So these are the muscle fibers or muscle cells. For example, the smooth muscle cells, they are attached to each other. So this is muscle tissue. Okay. In case of neural tissue, you have already seen all these tissues under microscope. In case of neural tissue, 
the main cells are called what? The neurons. Neurons look like this, right? Cell body and processes, axon dendrites. So you will see the neurons, the larger cells and neuroglial cells. Those two types of cells are found in the neural tissue. Neurons are the main cells. Neurons are the main cells and glial cells are the supporting cells. Also called neuroglial cells, same thing, okay? So this is nervous or neural tissue. Neural tissue. So you see different types of tissues are different, right? They have different characteristics or properties in general. But within each type of tissue, all cells are similar cells. For example, in nervous tissue, neurons, all these are same. In muscle tissue, all these cells are similar cells. Connective tissue, similar cells. Epithelial tissue, similar cells, right? So many similar cells group together or unite together to form a what? Tissue. Is it clear? Okay. Now, uh, we'll see where you will find these four different types of tissues in the body. First, just know that epithelial tissue is found in the surface of the body, number one, and inner lining of the organs. So, epithelial tissue on the body surface and inner lining of the organs as well as inside the glands. So these are three main locations where you find the epithelial tissue. these three structures. Now, who forms, uh, yes? You said in the glands, is the surface of the glands or inside? Inside. So, what is the body surface? Body surface is the skin. skin, you know, right? So, the skin surface is epithelial tissue. Make sense? Number one. Number two, I said inner lining of the organs. Inner lining of what type of organs? Tube-like organs. Tube-like organs and hollow organs. Now, everybody, think about tube-like structures inside your body. Can you name one? La loud. Intestine. intestine, intestine, right? Small intestine, large intestine, tubes, you know that, right? Anything else? Tube like? Say loud. What tube like structures you have here, everybody? Esophagus and trachea, right? Air tube, trachea. How about bronchi? Tubes, right? Narrow tubes. Larynx. Larynx. How about blood vessels? Tube, right? Arteries, veins. Does mm -hmm. make sense? So those are the tube-like organs in the body, right? And inner lining of those tubes are epithelial tissue. Is it clear? Now you tell me hollow organs. What are the hollow organs inside your body? They're like big cavity inside. Stomach, right? Stomach, make sense? How about here? You have urinary bladder. You have uterus, right? Those organs have hollow or cavity inside. So inner lining of those organs, epithelial tissue. Is it clear? And inside the glands. 
<coughs> now, where you will find the muscle tissue in the muscles, right? The muscle tissue in the muscles. So you have skeletal muscle, you already know. Cardiac and what? Smooth. Smooth. Skeletal muscles are located where? I told you before, attached to the bones. Skeleton. Make sense? Skeletal muscles are attached to the skeleton. Is it clear? So they help in what? Movement. Movement. Okay. So that is skeletal, attached to the skeleton, help in the movement. Is it clear? Number two, cardiac muscle, highly special type of muscle found in the heart, heart only in the heart, right? And help to pump the blood. Smooth muscle in the wall of tube like, again, and hollow organs in the wall of tube-like and hollow organs. That means in the wall of the intestine, wall of the esophagus, make sense? Wall of your larynx, pharynx, wall of trachea, hollow organs are stomach, uterus, urinary bladder. In the wall, you will find those uh, uh, smooth muscles. For example, this is your also artery. This is your intestine. Okay. So this is the wall. Here, the muscle is the smooth muscle. And inner lining, thin layer of the tube is epithelium. Okay. So this is. So wall, the thick wall is muscle, right? Mm -hmm. Smooth muscle. And inner lining means this is the tube, okay? It's in a thin layer, okay? That makes the surface smooth. Okay, so muscle tissue. Now, <coughs> neural tissue. In the nervous system. That means neural tissue is found in the brain, spinal cord, and nerves of your body. Okay? Neural or nervous tissue. Okay? And I mentioned before that nervous system is the main control system of the body. So, electrical signal transmission is the function. Electrical transmission of signal, okay? And control the body functions. Control body functions. Okay, so that's the nervous or neural tissue. So we have talked about the location of epithelial tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous or neural tissue. The last one is what? Another type of tissue? Connective, connective tissue. And I mentioned that connective tissue is the most abundant, most widely distributed tissue in the body. Almost everywhere you will find connective tissue. So. Let's see, where the connective tissue? Which means we have more connective tissue than epithelial. Yeah, yeah. The total mass of connective tissue is much, much, much more than other tissue. So, connective tissue, connective tissue is what? Most widely, what did I say? Distributed, Distributed tissue, right? And most common type. 
many structures of your body are formed by connective tissue and they are different from each other. For example, your bones, cartilages, blood, you see, liquid, uh, fats, tendons, ligaments, all these belong to connective tissue. Make sense? So, different types of structures are formed by connective tissue. Okay, so um, those are the locations of four different types of tissues in your body. Now we'll talk about the epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue is divided in two ways. First we'll see the classification. Classification of epithelial tissue, okay? By location. By and by shape of cells. Okay? Make sense? So we divide the epithelial tissues in two ways. One way is by location. Another is by looking the cells. By location, we divide into two covering and lining that I have mentioned, the covering outer surface and inner lining uh, epithelial tissue. So covering and lining and for example, covering example is what? I told you? About skin. Skin, right? The whole body is covered by skin, right? So epithelial tissue. Lining, inner lining of tube-like structures and hollow organs. Remember that? So, covering, example is skin, lining, inner linings. <coughs> that is one. Another by location is glandular. I also mentioned, remember that? You asked me the question, where is the gland? Inside the gland, right? So, glandular epithelium. Inside the gland. Now you tell me, glandular epithelial cells should do what? Inside the gland, the cells should do what? Secrete the hormones, make sense? Secrete the chemicals. We know that inside the gland, the cells secrete. So, the glandular epithelial cells secrete the chemicals. So that is by location. covering and lining and glandular, okay, by location. By shape, you already know this. In the lab part, you remember I said that one type of epithelial tissue has tall cells. This is called what? Columnar. Remember that? Tall cells. Height is more than the width like columns, so columnar. By looking at the shape of the cells. Another type, you already know, cubical shaped, like cubes. This is called what? You board up. shaped cells. Another is what? Flat. This is called what? Everybody. Squirms. Squirms. Should know this by now. You have seen the tissue long ago. Squirmus. <coughs> Flat. Okay? Squirmus means the uh, of a, uh, you know, fish, 
scale of fish like flat right thin scale of fish so that is squamous another type of uh, epithelial tissue where the cells change their shape that is called what cells change their shape transitional you should remember this one transitional transitional epithelial tissue remember that transitional have you heard this name yeah. okay so tall cells columnar cubical shaped cells cuboidal flat like scale of the fish squamous and those uh, in uh, the epithelial tissue where the cells change their shape that's the transitional makes sense transitional right not fixed changing there is another type of epithelial tissue where the cells are columnar but the height of the cell is different from each other so when you see this under the microscope although a single layer of columnar cells here right but they look like multiple layer because the nuclei are at different heights make sense so when you see this under the microscope it may give you a false impression that it is multiple layer because of nuclei make sense but it is a single layer that's why this is called what pseudo stratified stratified means multiple layer stratified columnar okay sometimes in pseudo stratified columnar we see cilia okay cilia So these are different types of epithelial tissue by shape of the cells. Now, one more thing, if you see the cells have formed one layer, single layer, that is called simple. So this is simple columnar, make sense? This is simple cuboidal. If you see more than one layer, that is called what? Stratified. So this is stratified what? Stratified columnar. columnar. Make sense? This is what? Stratified cuboidal. This is stratified now squamous. Okay? More than one layer. <coughs> stratified. Uh, most of the cases, not always, not always, not always, but most of the cases, we see pseudo-stratified ciliated columnar epithelial tissue is present mostly in the trachea, upper respiratory tract, inside the nasal cavity. Why? Secretion of mucus occurs there, right? So the mucus gets dirty. So the cilia will work like broom, will, you know, clean the mucus. So regularly the cilia are moving like this to clean the surface. Okay. So where you need to clean the surface, you have so they stratified ciliated columnar. Okay. So if you see cilia, we say pseudo stratified ciliated. Okay. If not, then pseudo stratified columnar. So this is how we classify the epithelial tissue. Clear? Okay. <clears throat> epithelial tissue has some special characteristics. How they are different than other tissues. Epithelial tissue is always supported by underlying connective tissue that I have already mentioned few minutes ago. This is called the basement membrane. Basement membrane. 
basement membrane supported by the basement membrane number 1 number 2 epithelial tissue has no blood vessel so avascular a means absence avascular avascularity is another important property that means no blood vessels inside the epithelial tissue is it clear now the question you may ask that how the epithelial tissue gets nutrition and oxygen if there is no blood circulation inside it right what happens you see connected connective tissue is vascular so you have underlying connective tissue where you have the blood vessels so these are the blood vessels here and by diffusion nutrition and oxygen go to these cells by diffusion okay so although epithelial tissue doesn't have blood vessels but from underlying connective tissue it gets nutrition and oxygen by what diffusion, diffusion. number 2 number 3 epithelial cells you see these cells have a base and apical end free end and attached end so this is the attached end this is the free end and in the free end sometime you will see cilia hair like structure okay hair like structure at the apical end so this is the apical or free end and this is the basal or attached end so that is another property of epithelial tissue uh another important property that i have already mentioned and you have seen every time the cells are attached to each other they are not separated attached to each other by intercellular junctions you remember tight junction gap junction desmos on side so the junctions hold the cells or cell membranes to each other okay so that is another property <coughs> high rate of regeneration epithelial tissue can quickly regenerate it. example you know when you eat something hot in a lining of your mouth right you will see that sometimes if it is very hot coffee or tea right the cells die every time you are drinking coffee or tea the cells are dying epithelial cells inside the mouth okay but quickly those cells are reproduced how you know after you drink something very hot you know if you burn your mouth then after few hours you know it comes back to normal right so you know that skin we lose the skin right sometimes we'll see if the skin gets too dry right skin comes off but quickly new skin is formed right so high rate of regeneration uh, cell can multiply quickly and produce that tissue fast so those are the properties of the epithelial tissue is it clear so if you i quickly review the cells are supported by what underlying tissue. connective tissue right number 1 cells are attached to each other by intercellular junctions right they are attached to each other by special attachments cells have blood vessels or not no no so avascularity right but they get nutrition and oxygen from underlying connective tissue by diffusion is it clear high rate of what regeneration quickly the cells can multiply produce tissue again okay so and apical free end and attached or basal end so those are some important properties of the epithelial tissue if i ask you to write you will write those points now in next few slides what i will do you already you are familiar uh, to these pictures you have seen these pictures and also you have seen the tissue under the microscope two things <coughs> you will see the picture how 
the tissue looks like under the microscope. Number two, I'll mention few locations. You need to remember, not all, few lo important locations where you find that type of epithelial. Okay? So those two things you have to remember. So this is simple squamous, right? Simple squamous. Why this is simple squamous? If you look at this tissue, let me draw here. These are alveoli of the lung, three alveoli here. And the wall of the alveoli has the cells, nucleus. Now you tell me, what type of cells are these? Flat or tall? Flat cells, right? Flat. That means what? One. How many layers? Only one, right? One layer of flat cells. That means very thin wall. So this is simple squamous. Make sense? So where you will find the simple squamous? Number one, alveolar wall inside the lung. You have alveoli, they are balls in the wall of the alveoli, you have simple squamous. Inner lining of the blood vessels and heart, inner lining of the blood vessels and heart. This is the blood vessel, right? So the inner lining is very thin, simple squamous. And inside the heart, this is the wall of the heart. This lining, inner lining, is simply squamous. Okay. Remember just only those three. I said what? Wall of the alveolar of the lung, right? Number two, inner lining of the blood vessels, arteries, veins, capillaries. Make sense? And inner lining of the heart. Okay. Simple cuboid. If you see this tissue, you have to look carefully. Tube-like structures. <coughs> These are called ducts. And in the wall, you will see the cells are like this. The cubical shaped cells, nucleus. So this is one cell, this is another cell, this is another cell, and cubical shape, right? And single layer, make sense? So this is simple cuboid. Make sense, right? Single layer of cubical shaped cells in the wall of the ducts. These tubes are called ducts. Where you will find these ducts? Inside the kidney. Kidney tubules, it's a kidney tubules. And inside the glands. So ducts of the glands and kidney tubules. <coughs> Those are the main locations. <coughs> Is it clear? Okay. The tube-like structures. Microscopic tubes. Now look at this. What type of cells are these? Columna. Columna, right? And single layer here, right? So simple columna. Make sense? Simple columna. Where do you find the simple columna? Epithelial lining? In the intestine. Stomach and below. In your GI tract. Gastrointestinal tract. Now you tell me. Stomach is here, okay? And below the stomach, after the stomach, you have what? Intestine. Very good. Small intestine, large intestine, right? So in the wall, in the lining of the stomach, and below that means in the intestine. Small and large intestine. Make sense? But not above. Above the stomach, you have the esophagus, right? Here. Which is different. That's why I said simple columnar in the stomach and below. Is it clear? 
Okay. Uh, in the lining of the uterus, that is another, you can write it down, uterus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine. Those are the main locations, okay? Which tissue is this? You see cilia, right? That means pseudo stratified ciliated columnar. Remember that? Cilia? Okay. So, <coughs> so the stratified ciliated, I mentioned a few minutes ago, is found in those areas where you need cleaning. Remember that? Like broom. So, in the upper respiratory tract, where mucus is secreted, right? Inside the nose, nasal cavity, right? Inside the trachea. Is it clear? Where mucus is secreted and you regularly need to clean the mucus. The cilia, you know, billion of cilia move together. That creates a lot of power, right? Like, you know, when although each cilia is extremely weak, right? Cannot move anything. But when you just think that billion move in same direction, that creates what? Force, right? And that is enough to push the mucus down. When you breathe every time, dust is getting in, right? And the sticky surface of your nasal cavity and tracheal respiratory tract. Um, uh, that sticky surface is trapping the dust particles are being trapped there, right? Getting a dust and you need to clean the surface. Okay, so uh, that's the pseudo stratified ciliated column. Stratified squamous. Many layers of black cells. Now when you see the stratified squamous, you look at this part, not here. Here, these are the stem cells, so they look different, okay? You are looking at this part. Many flat cells, many layers, right, of flat cells. That means stratified squamous. Stratified squamous is found in those areas where you need protection. The chance of friction is high. Chance of what? Friction is high. That means this layer is thick. Many layers of flat cells, which makes it thick and gives protection against friction. Is it clear? Now you tell me, where you get most of the friction? Skin, yeah. skin right? Skin, outer surface of the body. So skin is stratified what? Squamous. Make sense? Another location where you get friction all the time. Inside the mouth, right? When you chew the food, friction, right? So, inside the mouth, inner lining of the mouth, stratified scrum. Is it clear? Esophagus, narrow tube. When the food passes, friction occurs. The esophagus. Okay? So, uh, inner lining of vagina. So those are the locations. Now, we divide those locations into two types, dry and wet. Skin is what? Dry, right? Skin is dry surface. Inside the mouth is what? Wet. Wet surface. So in dry surface, the stratified squamous is called keratinized. That means a special protein called keratin is present there. That's why it is called keratinized in dry surface. Keratinized stratified squamous. sense? In wet surface, you have 
have non-catenized stratophytoscopes. Is it clear? So, which one has keratin? This one. Keratin is a special protein. Keratin is a protein that is present in keratinized. In non-keratinized, that special protein is absent. Okay? So that's why uh, one is keratinized, where you have keratin. Another is non-keratinized, where you don't have that protein. Make sense? No keratin. Transitional. Transitional epithelial tissue cells change their what? Shape. Shape is not fixed and found in those organs you have stretch, pressure, urinary bladder. Okay? So that is one important uh, uh, function of the transitional epithelium, they can take pressure. Make sense? They can take pressure or stretch. So when the bladder gets bigger, the cells get what? More flat. When the bladder gets smaller, cells get tall, narrow. Make sense? It's like elastic thing. Make sense? Elastic. When bladder gets big, more pressure on the wall, right? The linings, the cells get more flat. When squeezes, get tall. So that is number one, transitional. Number two property is through the transitional epithelial lining, no fluid can pass. Fluid cannot pass through it. Is it clear? So now you tell me, inside the bladder, this is the bladder, you have transitional, right? So inside the bladder, what kind of fluid do you have? Urine. Urine, right? So urine stays there, right? Is stored there, and the lining is transitional. Should urine be able to get back into the body? No. So that's why you have transitional there because it doesn't allow what fluid pass through it. Make sense? So urine will stay inside, and when you desire, gets out from the body, right? You urinate. But if urine is staying there for hours, you know that, right? If it can get back into the body, no point of, you know, production of urine. So it should not get back into the body. That's why you have transitional. Also, ureter, the tube, that always taking the urine from the kidney to the bladder, okay? That ureter has transitional. Same reason, okay? So, uh, in simple way, if you think, why you have urine, okay? That is transitional. Urinary bladder, ureter. No, I didn't say only, I said two things. Uh, Another, the most important I said at the last, you know, uh, yeah. sentence I said, where you have urine. So fluid should not pass through it. No, I'm talking about the uterus. You know, also it's stretched. From the uterus, the fluid can get back into the body. Uh, so it's not highly protected, you know, uh, and we don't need amniotic fluid. It's, it's not that harmful, but urine is harmful, we know yeah. that, right? The toxic chemicals are in the urine. So urine should not go get back into the body. From any other part of the body, fluid goes from one area to another, one compartment to another, okay? But urine is like toxic chemical that should not get back into the body. Make sense? So not only stretch, but also where the fluid should not be able to pass through. Uh, stratified cuboidal and the stratified columnar, those are present in very few uh, areas, very limited distribution in the body. Stratified cuboidal in mammary gland, that means in the breast, and stratified columnar, uh, small part of pharynx and uh, urethra. You probably don't need to know these two things. These are very limited distribution. So, uh, 
tissue is a collection of many what? Cells. What kind of cells? Different or similar? No, similar. Similar cells, okay? And how many tissues you have? Four different types of tissues, right? Epithelial, connective, muscle, muscle and neural or nervous, right? We have already talked about the epithelial tissue. How did you learn about epithelial tissue? You have learned the classification, right? Location, shape of cells, right? And um, uh, you have learned the special properties or characteristics of epithelial tissue, right? You have learned uh, the, uh, each type of epithelial tissue and important locations where you find it, right? So now, I will uh, start the connective tissue, most widely distributed tissue in the body, most common and Many different structures are formed by connective tissue that I have listed today. You have that bones, cartilages, ligaments, tendons, uh, blood, right? Uh, fat or adipose tissue, all 